And you see it counting up here. Yeah. You can't have it. Hang on. Don't be stingy. Are you ready, Randy? Hey guys. Hey y'all, church service. Hey. Greg, your coffee there. I expect y'all. Hey, 172, 128. I think it's ready. 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 Hey, Mike. Okay, fellas, you join in with us if you'd like to here at the Fair Haven Rescue Mission. Praise the Lord, pass the invitation to God with principle. Red, yellow, brown, black, and white. We're all now. precious in Jesus' sight. <laughs> There's more me than you. Look at the size of me. I want to take some, folks. I'm down there at the witch. Wait. No, down at the, the gym, they call it. This young fella. Bench pressed 220 pounds. I looked at him and I said, that's really good. So I got up off my chair and I said, I bench press 380 every time I get out of a chair. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to do it right now, but later on I'll get out of the chair. <laughs> so you know it's possible. Well, let's open up with uh, the song here. That's Randy Wallace right there. And I have to tell you something, fellas. Randy Wallace has been a minister at Oak Ridge Baptist Church for about 40 years, right, Randy? And uh, it's out on Taylorville Highway. Now, there's lots of churches in northern Kentucky, greater Cincinnati. You find one about every other corner. You find the Catholic, you find the Baptist, you find the Protestant, the Methodist, the Methodist, the Methodist, and all sorts. But you'll never find one just like Randy Wallace's Oak Ridge Baptist Church. It's unique. It is filled with the Spirit of the Lord. And we got another one over there on Bethesda Road over there, Bethesda Community Church. Good folks from Tim Prime Booth and Brother Pike Master and them. And uh, we're building a new road through there. Randy's out on Taylorville, about seven miles south on Highway 16, where you can get to. You'll be greeted with a smile and a handshake and some love. You know something? He's been coming here over 30 years. Every fourth Friday with the Whosoever Will group. And my brother Gerald has gone on to heaven. Gerald Stevenson. My sister, Barbara Stevenson Brander, who's gone on to heaven. School teacher, fourth grade, A.J. Lindeman and Sam Henrys. All are right. Little something special is going to take place out in her Lanker. I think it's September the 27th, Randy, 2 o'clock. I hope you can make it too. That old seven-mile house that I had there, that I rehabbed, pipe and tobacco shop, it used to be the Right Way Cafe. Before that, it was a seven-mile house. But I donated that little piece of land down there to the city of Erlanger years ago. They made it into a beautiful little park. And on September the 27th, they're going to have me come out and sing my old Kentucky home, Randy. And they've got the words written out in my old Kentucky home on a beautiful 
wall they built there, it's an old stone wall that I built, it's still there. New fence, new trees, beautiful. It's gonna be called Seven Mile Park. And we'll be singing. My nephew, Todd Stevenson, Gerald's son, is gonna come out with his drone. You know, you know these drones they've got? He's gonna come out and film it all from the sky. I tell you what, and I'll be singing my heart out out there. September the 27th, the Lord willing in the creek don't rise. This little song here means a lot, folks. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven to Tennessee Ernie Ford song, 
written by Merle Travis. We might do that a little later. But Indian hunting grounds, pioneer explorers on Kentucky flat roads they came. Eastern foothills, western flatlands, central bluegrass and clear water ways. First there were three, now 120. The counties came from a horseback ride. River gamblers, steamboat cruises, railroads and wagon trains. Wilderness trails to auto roads. Stubble fields wireless to the VCR. Now today we even have the cell phones, don't we? All kinds of computers. Technology has really changed. But we always remember the beginning. Without Kentucky's preachers, we wonder where we are. North and south, they came a calling. Lincoln and Davis, we provided both. Blood was shed throughout her valleys. War and feud, she was their host. Courthouse shiny, pride goes with her. Times are tough but full of play. Schoolhouse yearning, workers not earning. Time to change for a better way. Mammoth Cave is her natural wonder, but her beauty lies in her diverse lands. From her man-made lakes to streams and rivers, Kentucky holds to heaven's hand. Yearlings growing, lovers knowing, springtime's coming to my old Kentucky home. A history lesson we've been given, the time has come for us to grow. I broke that back in 1988. After my wife, June Diamond Stevenson, the smartest move I've ever made, and the lady that sends down a bag of peppermints for you guys every time I come down here. She says, say, say hello to all the men for me. And tell them I love them. Because I'll tell you something, men, we do love you. Randy loves you. Randy even loves me. That's not easy to do, ask my wife. <laughs> she always says, I love you, most of the time. Now, while we're here, let's finish up that little song we started. If I can find the words here. Someone said, why do you need the words, John? Well, I've had the virus three times. Three Christmases ago, I was in the hospital. Fort Thomas with close to death. Some doctors, some medicines, intravenous medicines. They pulled me out. I looked at the Lord and said, I'll go back to work for you as soon as I get healed. But I lost a big section of memory there somewhere. The old brain, they say I can't make major decisions now. And I thought, what's that mean? I can't do what I want to do. Well, you know, you got to have, you got to tell people every once in a while, Randy, I'm going to do it anyway. Just like uh, the last four days, you know where I was? You know, it's just a big restaurant down here at the Radisson. It's called the Radisson Hotel. They got a restaurant that goes around and around the whole Cincinnati, North Kentucky area. Well, I went up there and filmed the whole trip all the way around. All the way around. Did it twice. Took my son with me the first day. Bless his heart, Guy Stevens. My son and three daughters. It's nice to have sons and daughters, I'll tell you. He come and help me do the pictures, help carry my, all my things I needed to have with me. But I went up there to film it for a person, for a reason. They're going to build a new bridge there. And this is important to you guys, too. You know why? There will be jobs there. There will be work to do there. They'll need people. We all need people. And uh, that was the very first place that handicapped people started to work. Northern Kentucky was at that hotel when it was owned by Dave Frisch. How do I know? Because I was a rehabilitation counselor back in those days with the State Department of Education with Goodwill Industry. And I got people jobs over there that were handicapped. The first ones with Dave Frisch. Yes, sir. What they call it? Is it, called? it was called the Quality Motor Inn at that time. It was built, I think, in 1967, something like that. Nail for the sign off. Yep, absolutely. And uh, that was back when Dave Frisch was alive, because I had been a manager with him. But just over in glory land, we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. The songs of praise and praise we're back from heaven's shore. And I can't be left home in this world anymore. Where?
will anymore. Now, you know why I did all that roundabout and filming and pictures? It was because they're going to build the brand new bridge. Take about seven years to get it built. I remember when they built the first one, Randy. My high school, Simon Kenton High School, was the band that played at the uh, ceremony at the end of the building, 1963. Mark Holmes, yes. Are they doing the tram or are they doing the bridge? They're going to do the bridge, the whole bridge. I'm glad they ain't doing that tram. Well, they're going to do the whole bridge. It's going to be quite a scene for seven, about seven years. 3.6 or 3.8 billion dollars, and uh, there's going to be a lot of jobs there, a lot of growth and economic development, which helps us all if we do it properly and under God's will. And uh, but the reason I did the roundabout was to see all the land and all the things as they are now, and then I went down and interviewed all of the um, uh, engineers, folks that are to handling the project. And all that could be seen, and all the slides and presentations could be seen now on YouTube. It was about five hours of video show that I did. Now, that's a lot. But, you know, a lot of people can sit at home and watch that now and learn all about how that's going to happen, what's going to take place, and what it's going to look like. Right, Randy? That's education. How do we get educated? We have to learn. We have to open our eyes and open our ears and learn. And, and you know, Nobody paid me to do that. You know who paid me to do that? You all. You all. And God gave me the ability, kept me alive to be able to do it. Some people say, why do you help people? I help them because God says to help people. Right, Randy? And you help them as best you can. Now, I'm broke now. I can't help a whole lot monetarily, but I still can help educate teach and love. It's the Holy Spirit's job to convict. It's God's job to judge. It's my job, your job, our job, to love. It's pretty simple, isn't it? That's what Billy Graham taught me. 1956, Randy, when I gave my life to the Lord, my little sister Judy Lynn Felty Stevenson talked to her tonight. She's sitting where she can't walk hardly at all from an automobile accident. For some folks, unfortunately, were on drugs, being chased by the police. They ran into her, put her into the hospital, broken some 60-some bones in her body, lost her eyesight in one eye. She can barely move. She has only like 33% capacity of breathing air. But she said to tell the men tonight, I love them. I love them. So I'm telling you for my little sister. And my brother was here singing. He would tell you the same thing, wouldn't he, Randy? And Randy brought him to the Lord. That's the truth. Randy was the minister who brought my brother to the Lord. And well, that was a good thing. my brother learned the Bible frontwards and backwards, didn't he, Randy? They could quote it to you. He didn't have to look. <laughs> I've got a PhD. And I got to look every time I could say something. <laughs> but nice to be here with you tonight. You know what that is? That's Jesus knocking. And he knocks on your door. Everybody's door. Not just mine, not just Randy's. Everybody's door. But we must reach down, turn the knob, and invite him into our hearts. Right, Randy? And when you, you invite Jesus into your heart, then you, old Harold Pike, Minister right down here at Southside Baptist, I think it was called, for many years. I guess he preached for about 50 years, didn't he, Randy? Yeah. I was watching him put him in the ground up there when they buried him here about four, six, or seven months ago. And I thought, how many men did he tell? Answer that knock and then make a U-turn in life. Make a U-turn in life. That's what I'm doing by Harold Pike. Make a U-turn in life. And then who's our judge? God. What's our role? Love. Love. Red, yellow, brown, black, and white, we're all precious in Jesus' sight. All of us are precious in Jesus' sight. Randy, can I 
talk you into doing one now? Now, who, I guess I need to tell them who I am, Donna Randy. Yeah, yeah. I'm John Stevenson. I used to be, why am I so interested in that? I used to be Deputy Secretary of Transportation for the state of Kentucky and Commissioner of Motor Vehicles for the state of Kentucky back in the 80s. And then I was the last elected Superintendent of Education for the state of Kentucky. Now think about that. Little Simon Kenton boy went on to be Superintendent of Education for the whole state of Kentucky. Now I'm just old. <laughs> but you know I'm still enjoying every day sharing the love of Jesus. And that's what it's all about. It isn't the muckety muck job you're in, it's how you do the position you get in life. My mom wrote the beautiful verse Give a lift to your fellow man. I might read it to you later. If not, I'll tell you about it. But I had a wonderful mother that taught me the lessons of giving and love. Darn it, Bingham Stevenson. You see it all on my website and YouTube. Randy, can we talk to you in now? Randy Wallace, Minister Oak Ridge Baptist Church. Can you do a couple for us? I'd be glad to. I'd be glad to. I, I was thinking about this uh, a while back when we were in Bible school. And uh, I, I got saved in July of 1967. And uh, the reason I know that, I, I wrote it in the Bible I had at the time. My grandma and grandpa had got me a, a white Bible. That's a bride's Bible. I don't know what they were thinking. You know, but uh, they got me a white Bible. And now, of course, I'm not eight anymore. I'm long since age. I was showing it to the kids. One of the little kids asked me, said, is that the original signed King James Version that you got there? And I said, no, but it's all up there. But uh, if, if you've never asked the Lord in your heart, I mean, it, it's time. Uh, read the newspapers. If you have, then it's time to get serious about your Christianity. But uh, always remember the day that this happened to you.
and you know receiving God's love. The, the cross is in the, the shape of a up and down and then like this. And have you ever seen any Christians that look like they baptized in the sin of Jews? You know, they're seeing, and, uh, and I, I think what the problem is, they're like an old stagnant pump. That love comes down to them, and they feel God's love, but they never give it out, too. Uh, and Archie Jordan, uh, an online friend of mine, uh, wrote a lot of good songs. It was almost like a song, and what a difference she made in my life, and different things like that. But Archie's a Christian out of Georgia, and he, he wrote this song right here for B.J. Thomas. It's called Common Ground. Kentucky in an old Greyhound bus with my brother-in-law and my sister 
the Robinson family singers who traveled all over the United States playing See, and what? singing. The Robinson, the Robinson family singers. And they have uh, they entertain all over America. Now that Jackie's gone, the gentleman is gone. But uh, my sister is 86, and guess what? You know what a greeter is at Walmart? Mm -hmm. My sister at 86 is the greeter, Randy, down in Carrollton, Kentucky, working every day as the greeter. She worked many years just in the clothing department, but she they did a little film on her as a greeter, had it in on the television down in Louisville and in the newspapers. So I took a copy of it and put it on my Facebook page. And I thought, how neat. She sings there, welcomes people to, to Walmart. 86, still working. And uh, and then my brother-in-law, uh, Jackie, his son and their children are all entertainers. So they go out all over the world, still singing, here mainly in closer to home now. They live down around the Carrollton area, Brownlee County. But the reason I'm saying this is because they carry the message of Lord in a different way than a lot of people do. They did it through their music, didn't they, Randy? And Jack was an, actually an ordained minister at Church of Christ. And, uh, but all those years, and, and so it's, uh, I'm reminded of this song here, Randy, because you talked about the cross. Before I came in here tonight, I drove down just a little bit further so I could get a picture of the three crosses on the top. I think it's called the Mother of God Church. Mm -hmm. And I took a picture of those three crosses and we'll put it on tonight's show. And I thought, how wonderful. And I sing for you this song here called The Old Rugged Cross. Now I want you to feel comfortable in joining with me singing too. <clears throat> you want to come in and join? Just feel like it. You feel it? Do it. This is nothing formal, formal, is it, really? My little formal. <laughs> My little sister says, Are you still buzzing, Johnny? I'm buzzing all over the place. <laughs> I'm buzzing. But it goes like this. Oh, 
I just love the fact that my brother met him in a little stop and go store right down the street here, way out in Nicholson. Randy was in there buying some tapes and some things for his singing. And my brother was in there buying some tapes to listen to and he played the guitar and sang. Boy, could he sing. He could sing, couldn't he, Randy? Yeah. Gee, Willikers. He had a deep bass voice and he was six foot five and he heard every bit of it. And, uh, but he saw Randy buying these tapes, a big stack of them. Gerald had a big stack. And he finally asked, he said, what are you going to do with those tapes? And Randy said something to him about, well, I got to recording something, taping something. Now, he didn't know Randy was a minister. And he said, well, that, 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 that interested Gerald right off the bat. And he said, where did you, where do you get together playing and singing or anything like that? And, uh, and he said, well, won't you? Randy, I think Randy said, you can tell this story too if you want to, Randy, do you? Randy said, Randy said uh, well, he said, I guess we're going to buy out all their tapes here at the store. And Randy said to him, he said, well, why don't, we come, why don't you come on up to the basement? That, you know where that church is up there on uh, Taylor Mill? My brother said, yeah. And he said, well, why don't you come on up here in the basement? There's a piano down there. We can play some music down there do some recordings down there. And my brother said, well, they let you do that up there? And he said, oh, yeah, I think so. Now, he didn't tell Randy, didn't tell Gerald that he was the minister right off the bat at the church. So Gerald said, well, that sounds good. So he showed up up there one day, and they did some typing. and said, well, how'd you get this place? Well, I happened to be the minister here. <laughs> and believe me, that's what brought my brother uh, a veteran from Korean War, hard knocks, problems with alcohol. He didn't mind me saying that. He had some problems with it. So did my dad. My dad was an alcoholic. He almost killed all of us kids. I was a baby when we almost got killed. Come off the railroad and went to the bar and come driving home. And we were happy to be home. Got to be brought home from the hospital. Ran into the back of our car. Could have killed us all. But you know, he stopped drinking. But he didn't really truly come to the Lord until my mom was dying. He worked in the church and did all the things and tithes and everything, but not until my mom was dying. And I never will forget Randy when I was in the hospital with her down there. I was just about 24. She died at the age of 54. And I took her hand and I said, Mom, why do you think that God has to call you home instead of dead? And she said, Johnny, eyes opened up on her last breath and said, the Lord has to take me home in order for your father to be saved. And you know something? It turned out to be exactly the truth because he was saved after that and he spent the rest of his life, the rest of his life, got to see his son sworn in and when he was 86, sworn in to be the next like the last elected superintendent of education. He was down there and saw the whole ceremony and then was killed in an automobile accident a few months later and died in the arms of a Baptist minister. Now tell me how God doesn't do planning, but he was saved and he worked for the Lord every day of his life from my mom's death. And out there in Kenton Station, right out to Corsi Pike, there's a little church that's been built out there. The little wooden one-frame church, one-room church, still stands that I was saved in, Kenton Baptist Church, still standing there. Took us to Louisville on the old church, rickety church bus, my little sister and I, Brother Carter, Walter Dunlap, Walter Roden, John Grizzell, Vernon Likens, and Carl Cope were the deacons driving that old bus all the way to Louisville. Here, Billy Graham's crusade. And that's where I gave my life to the Lord. And that's where I learned the sermon. It's the Holy Spirit's job to convict, God's job to judge, my job to love. George Beverly Shea taught, taught us our songs. We came home and sang them. And one of them was called, I'd Rather Have Jesus. You mind if I do that, Randy? Yes, 
I'd rather have Jesus. And George Beverly Shea taught me this song. I sang it in that little one-room Baptist church. Now they got a new church out there that my dad turned the shovel over on. That's a deacon in that little Baptist church that's out there now. And Pastor Evans is a preacher there now. A wonderful preacher. And the song goes like this. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be His than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or land. I'd rather
And of course, you all prayed for uh, Darius Beach, who I took care of for eight years, eight long years, a Vietnam veteran, and brought him to the Lord in his, in his little camp, gave his life to the Lord. So he went on to heaven February the 26th, Randy, and uh, he's in heaven with the Lord now. So keep all of you got people that you need. Raise your hand if you got somebody you need us to pray for. Just raise your hand. If you got somebody who needs the prayers, we'll be praying for them. We don't have to have a name. We know that God knows us all. He knows every one of us. He knows every thought we ever thought of making. You know something? I went through a lot of education to get a PhD. This means piled higher and deeper, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> but frankly, you don't know what the Lord knows. The Lord knows everything every thought you have. And that's a wonderful thing in life, isn't it, Randy? Randy, we get time for another song? Or what's the situation? Do we have time for one more? You feel called to do one, but we got a full house tonight. Yeah. Oh, you got a full house? Yeah, Randy? We got, uh, it's real hot, so we got a lot of extra guys asking for showers. We don't ever turn anybody away. Oh, okay. Well, why don't you go ahead and say the word of prayer then, Randy? Be honored, be honored to. Thank you all for the opportunity to get to worship with you tonight. Let us bow together. Dear Heavenly Father, tonight, I just pray, Lord, that there be anybody that doesn't know you as Savior and Lord, that, Lord, maybe they felt your Holy Spirit speak to them. Lord, uh, keep, keep speaking to them, Lord, and help them to seek somebody out here or speak to one of us or anybody they know to be a Christian and, and say, I need to make my decision for, for the Lord. Uh, maybe there are others who are Christians and say, I need to draw closer to him or uh, I need to step out in, in faith on a ministry that I feel like he's calling me to. And I don't see a way in the world I'd be able to do it, but if he's calling me to it, we'll do it. Lord, I just pray tonight that you speak to hearts severally and continue to long after the chapel service is over. Be with all the guys, Lord, as they uh, get ready. Lord, help them have a wonderful night's sleep. And Lord, tomorrow as they wake up, and help them to look to you the very first thing and say, Lord, what are we going to get into today? Thank you so much for being there for us 24-7. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Nice to be with you. Give God a hand.
and three. And give me your names. Uh, Lindsay Walker. Lindsay Walker. Edie Parker. Nice to be here with you, and thanks for your warm hospitality. Well, thank you. Welcome to Northern Kentucky's <laughs> educational seminar. Yes, hopefully you find lots of good information in there. Good, thank you now. Let us know if you have any questions finished. Do I need a name badge? Or? I know, that's just um, for the project staff. Okay, out of this. thank you now. Thank you. Between Ohio and Kentucky, the project will build a new double-decker companion bridge with five lanes on each deck west of the existing Grimstead's Bridge. The new bridge will carry through interstate traffic across the Ohio River. The existing double-decker Grimstead's Bridge will be rehabilitated and reconfigured to reduce the number of lanes on each deck from four to three and provide inside and outside shoulders. The existing bridge will carry local traffic only as part of the proposed collector distributor roadway system.
Well, we happen to be here with the general manager here, night general manager. When you're night general manager, you're general manager. Because that night's where the action happens. <laughs> yes, sir, absolutely it is. And who do we have here now? My name is Mike Morris. And, and Mike, it's nice to be here with you all the last two days here with the transportation cabinet downstairs. They did a beautiful job explaining everything and I filmed it all, got it ready to put on YouTube and Facebook. But we had to close out with a special thank you to the iconic Radisson Hotel here that's been so kind to us to allow us to come up here to the top and film the great views of greater Cincinnati and all of Northern Kentucky, the Golden Triangle, about this very important growth and economic development of the new bridge, which will start taking place after tonight. Yes. And uh, it'll be going and moving on, and we all want to be part of that action and make sure it helps all the citizens of Northern Kentucky and uh, the Commonwealth and Greater Cincinnati, Ohio, and Indiana. We need to stick together. Now, tell us a little bit about the Radisson Hotel here. Yes, sir. Uh, the Radisson Hotel was built in October of 1972, and so we're just now, we're now celebrating our 51st year. And uh, when it uh, opened up, it was a quality inn hotel. It was owned by Frisch's uh, Restaurants when it was when it uh, opened up back in 1972, and the name of the restaurant when it opened up was called Riverview. It was called Riverview Restaurant. The restaurant up here on 18 has been three named three different restaurants. It's been Riverview, then it became 360, and now it's currently 18 at the Radisson. Fantastic. Well, it's a beautiful place with beautiful views, showing the different changes and many changes physically and otherwise of all of the greater Cincinnati northern Kentucky area and uh, how long have you been with the folks here about 13 here, years, 15 uh, years 15 years yes sir uh, I've been 15, here 15 years. years I take care of all the departments in the hotel at nighttime and then if I take care of any guest uh, complaints and uh, make sure that everything goes well in the hotel at nighttime well you've done a beautiful job and I remember when Dave Frisch first bought this property here and I helped as a rehabilitation counselor to bring in the first handicapped workers here back then. And they've been good workers ever since, red, yellow, brown, black, and white. We all appreciate them all, don't we? Yes, sir, we should. And so does Jesus. Absolutely, they're very hard workers and we appreciate every one of them. Well, it's nice to be here with you tonight. Anything else you wanna add? Now, if folks wanna come here to eat, you're open about five o'clock now, aren't you? We do, we open Tuesday through Saturday from five until 10 p.m. And then on Sundays, we do a Sunday brunch here every Sunday. And we're open from 10 until 2 on Sundays. And if you happen to want to come here on Sunday night or Monday night, we are closed in the restaurant Sundays and Monday nights. So Tuesday through Saturday for dinner, and then for brunch, 10 until 2. Fantastic. And you've seen many pictures that I've taken down here and videos all the trip around the whole circle here in the, in the rotunda here. It's just absolutely beautiful. We can see the Carroll Chimes down there named after a former governor. And remember when a Governor Burt Combs came up here in 1963, I was a driver for him many times around the state of Kentucky. And Henry Ward was the commissioner of highways, which I became a deputy commissioner back in 1982 under Martha Lane Collins. And uh, this is a project here that has tremendous value to all of Northern Kentucky and Cincinnati, about $3.8 billion, as I understand it. And uh, whereas this bridge that's out here in front of us was about $10 million back then. Absolutely. And a big difference in size and cost, but it will be add to all of ours, as I say, the golden triangle of Kentucky, Lexington and Louisville, and to the gateway to the south. Now, anything else you want to add about Who's your general manager here? Our general manager's name is Art Santomo. A great man. Yes, sir, he sure is. And uh, all of our uh, department managers do a really great job. All of our staff here at the hotel, they're very committed uh, to making the hotel very successful. And we're really excited about the future. Uh, and I, I went down and looked at the bridge project, some of the photos and some of the drawings that they have. 
it looks like it's going to be tremendous and we're all so excited that it's finally getting accomplished. And you can come here and have your meal and enjoy the progress of the bridge. Absolutely, you sure can. Yes, Praise sir. the Lord and pass the ammunition. Godly principles, join us on Facebook and YouTube. And don't forget to listen to WIOK 107.5 FM on the radio dial. Post Office Box 50, Falmouth, Kentucky 41040. They have all the gospel music across this whole tri-state also. And they're very supportive, Gil and Jan Hammond, of what you're doing here. It's a wonderful place. God bless you and have a great day. Thank you very much. You too, sir. Thank you. Boots are pro. There's where we were, folks, at the top, going round and round, like the round mound of sound, Kenny Price. Heading out to Pee Wee's now with a group out there, supporters of uh, some progressive conservative changes, doing rights in Kentucky. Well, now we're getting back on the expressway, leaving the area where the rotunda is there, the iconic uh, Radisson. 18th floor. been listening to the debate and backgrounds as you, you can hear going on but we had a few folks out here tonight just for a special cause and uh, want to introduce you to everybody here tell us who you are Jenny Jane Bell Smith 
counsel across his brain. Linda Geiselberg. Linda Geiselberg. And both of you are optimist members Absolutely. and so optimist you. people. So are you. And Walt? Yeah, Walt Starshock. I'm at the Federal Arms Liaison with the National Rifle Association, too. And one of the brightest young attorneys coming along here. <laughs> T.J. <laughs> Roberts, almost an attorney. Almost an attorney. And Kyle Maskowski, I'm the Grassroots Engagement Director for Americans for Prosperity in Northern Kentucky. Well, now tell us, what is Americans for Prosperity in Northern Kentucky? Americans for Prosperity, um, we're a nonprofit political advocacy organization. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to empower people um, and give them the tools needed um, to, at the end of the day to achieve their American dream. Um, in many cases, we're trying to limit government, um, you know, free, free market economy, all those things. Um, to give you the power as the individual um, to live a better life and achieve your version of the American dream. Well, that's wonderful. That's a wonderful goal. As a former government teacher, and advanced government teacher, I can say that's a very honorable cause to be in, involved with. And you all are here tonight sort of supporting that cause, right? Yes. Well, you know, one of the greatest things in life is being able to speak your peace, uh, the right of free speech. And uh, you all support that greatly. And of course, as a, being a young lawyer coming on, even though I only went to law school for one year at Chase many, many years ago, it was a, an experience. And one of the first things they teach you in law school is about your freedom of speech and your rights. Isn't that so? It's very close to the first thing. It's one of the first things you learn in your second semester of your second year of law school. Uh, pretty much your entire second semester of constitutional law is focused on the First Amendment. And I bet you had some great teachers, didn't you? I did. I had uh, Professor Ken Katkin, who I went on to be the uh, teaching assistant for, both in Constitutional Law 1, 2, and Administrative Law. So out here uh, making sure that students are aware of their rights. I sued to protect those rights, the right to worship, the right to speak the right to protest, the right to gather, the right to travel, and luckily I've won. And uh, I hope to uh, continue that path and fight for others' rights to do that as well. Fantastic. Now, young man, what? Are, how is the organization functioning now? And it's a national organization, isn't yes, it? national organization. We're in 37 states now, um, and each state kind of works on some different things, um, but here in Kentucky, um, primarily right now, we're doing our Blame Bashir campaign, um, just trying to educate Kentuckians on how Bashir has been kind of holding Kentucky back, um, and we're trying to get, um, you know, just better, better leadership so we can prosper as a state. Um, and then coming up, we'll be working on school choice to try to get school choice um, across the state of Kentucky so that kids aren't trapped in, a fail in failing schools. Um, just because there's zip code, and uh, here in Northern Kentucky especially, um, we're also working to repeal certificate of need, um, so that people, um, you know, it kind of goes back to that, giving them, you know, the power to choose what they feel like is best for their medical care, um, and having more choices for medical care providers as well. Fantastic, Will. I'm all for those school things you just talked about. Back in 1975, I received an award from the Kentucky Education Association, believe it or not, KEA, as an, the outstanding citizen, not teacher, but the citizen, outstanding citizen in the state of, of Kentucky, promoting public education. And I still promote public education. But one thing we cannot do is let the federal government take over our schools. And when that happens, we lose all of our abilities to teach the students what they really need to learn. And one of those things that they need to learn is that the Holy Spirit's job is to convict, God's job is to judge, my job is to love. And we all need to learn each other and to learn to love. Red, yellow, brown, black or white, we're all precious in Jesus' sight. And schools are the place, first place that this country was founded, and the schools were founded on the principle that they would be used to teach the children how to read the scriptures. Well... They need to tell the reach of how to read the science books and all the other books and history, but one of the most important things they need to teach them is how to understand the Constitution and the rights that God gave us in the first place. Would you agree with that, young man? Well, it's nice to be here tonight here at Pee Wee's and having a fine meal. And this young lady here, would you like to say something? No. Oh. <laughs> I do want to say something, but oh, no. Well, hang on just a second. 
we'll be finished here. Anything else you'd like to say? Now, Walt, you got anything else you want to say? Well, the Second Amendment is always under fire all the time, especially with yeah. the liberals that we have, and always trying to come up with new gun laws, which we don't need anymore. We really don't. We have enough of them. They need to be enforced, and this has been a real serious problem. There's always a knee-jerk reaction to come up with something new, but the biggest issue that we're dealing with right now is a mental illness issue with the Second Amendment and, and with these people and these shootings. Uh, we've never had any situation of any Republican ever in any kind of mass shooting involved in anything. It's always been involved in some real liberal or some Democrat or some psycho that's been causing all these problems. I have to go to a conference the 14th, 15th, and 16th of this month down in, uh, in Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, we're addressing this because we've got a lot, a lot of stuff on the plate right now, especially with this election, not only this one, but in 2024. And we always got to remember, you know, I grew up as a farm boy, had a little 22 rifle that I used to hunt with, and uh, we lived off the things that we killed, the squirrels and the rabbits. And, uh, you know, where I grew up, now as I was uh, gotten older, my employees down at the transportation cabinet when I was commissioner of motor vehicles gave me a beautiful shotgun as a gift engraved. Well, I wound up giving that to my grandson. Now, I don't have a gun now, but you know something? I've never seen a gun get up and shoot anybody. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it takes a human being and uh, one that's maybe a little deranged to get up and do that. So let's, uh, let's remember that. It isn't a gun or our rights that do it. It is happens to be, as someone who served as president of the Northern Kentucky Mental Health Association and uh, was on the board for 10 years, I can tell you that a gun has never shot anybody, Jeannie, has he? No. So, secret to life is what? Love. Love. We all must do with love, and we must protect each other. And uh, uh, if I have to can protect Miss June, actually, she'd probably be protecting me. <laughs> But anything else you'd like to add here tonight? Thank you again. Well, thank you so much for having us here. here at, uh, And I'd like to do this by closing it with just a little word of prayer, if I may. Just join in with me and we'll say our Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you all. Nice to be here with you this evening. And I'll close by saying, Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. I'm glad that Pee Wee's are our food place tonight.